The pros and cons of renting to Section 8 tenants. That's today's episode. Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, we are Clayton and Natalie Morris and you're listening to the Investing in Real Estate Show, or maybe you're watching it. One way or the other, we're going to give you information about how to be professional real estate investors because that's what we are. And today we want to talk about what it's like to have Section 8 tenants. Now this is a video for Section 8 landlords. If you want to apply to be a Section 8 tenant, that's not our specialty, but we actually do own investment properties that have Section 8 tenants. And we want to tell you about it because as Clayton pointed out in the previous video about what is Section 8 tenants, he thinks people have uh, misnomers or there are rumors. But what are these rumors that people think about Section 8 tenants? Well, I, I just don't like the, first of all, I, I don't like the, I don't know, stereotypes of it. Um, we've had guests here on the show in past episodes who are special uh, Section 8 specialists and they love it. Um, there are just a few more hoops and hurdles you have to jump through and you're going to have bad tenants regardless of whether it's Section 8 or A-class tenants like Natalie had in her A-class San Francisco rental property that trashed her place. So I don't give a rat's behind if you are low income or wealthy. You can be a bad tenant and destroy a property. And there are, there's a lot of, I think, I don't know, there's a lot of misinformation out there. I think people like to jump on the stereotype bandwagon right. and say that Section 8 tenants are bad. We own Section 8 properties and have the same level of issues that you'd have with a non-Section 8 tenant. I mean, that's very classist and judgmental to say that Section 8 tenants are going to be, I don't know what, like insert bad word here. You know, like that's not been it's our the world experience. We live in. No, it's and not. And so... Um, but that's why I want to set the record straight here okay. right out of the gate and let's have a frank discussion about what Section 8 tenants actually are and how you can switch your property into a Section 8 property if you so desire. So just at the basic level, Section 8 tenant has to prove a family status to qualify. They have to be a family. They have to have a certain income level that they actually, qualifies. They don't have to be a family. They just have to prove who they're living with. Right. So they have to show what what is my family. Right. You know, is it my uncle? And you can be a single person. Our Section 8 tenant is an elderly lady who lives alone. Right. So, But you have to show that family style. What is that when you're applying for it? And then you have to show citizenship status as well. And then you have to show your eviction history. And then you have basically the Section 8 in housing and urban development will place you in a property that qualifies, that's consistent with the neighborhood rental prices. They're not going to stick you in the million dollar luxury condo when everything else is renting for $600 a month on that street. They're just not going to do it because you need to be near your place of employment or that's near your, you know, near your extended family or something else. They're going to look at it all It doesn't really work like that. They're not like, that's too nice for you, Mr. Clayton. No, but they are going to look and say, that's not consistent with the neighborhood. So if you have a choice of these five places that qualify for Section 8 housing, um, you know, and one of them Well, is... they're going to pay a certain percentage of your rent. But if you get super lucky and get like a luxury high rise that still fits within your budget, they will certify that. Right. There's nothing too nice for a Section 8 tenant. That's Ch not a thing. But my, my saying, chances are <laughs> that's not going to happen. If, if every other place is renting for 600 bucks a month in that street... And there's one place that's renting for $3,000 a month on that street. They're not going to qualify that for Section 8 housing. Well, because they're only going to say you get $600 a month. Right. So we don't think that then you should be responsible for the remaining $2,400, right? Not because it's just like above your stature. Well, they're also going to say why. Like right. That. They're also going to say why you're going to pay $2,400 extra to live there when you could live basically for free with assisted living here in this pro anyway not to go off in a rabbit hole but you get my point okay so that's I the don't basics think i do but okay but this is what i live with so that's what that's the basics of you know section 8 tenant and what the you know neighborhood would qualify for that section 8 tenant so let's get into how you might want to convert your property or pros and cons of actually doing that for your rental property. Okay, so you can decide that I specifically would like a Section 8 tenant, and in which case you go to the housing authority, you call them up and say, I would like to certify my property for Section 8 tenants, and then they're going to start to funnel, fun I was going to say filter and funnel at the same time it came out as fiddle. Fiddle. Um, they're going to push you some tenants. 
<laughs> to come by and see if that. Now, those tenants don't have to live there, right? It's not Fahrenheit 451. No, but, but you're putting the cart before the horse because they have to certify your property. Right. First. But they're, so they're going to, once you meet certification, okay. then you're going to get additional applicants who have qualified for Section 8. That's one way to do it. Another way is you list your property for rent, and then someone who has a Section 8 certification as a tenant might call up and say, Will you accept a Section 8 tenant? And then if you do, then you're a match, right? So those are two different ways that you can become a Section 8 landlord. Um, I've actually never said no. I suppose it is the law to, that you can say no. Um, well, there because there are certain there, there are additional certifications that you have to get on your rental property. So there are additional health and service uh, and safety standards that you have to meet. They will send a city inspector out to your property to look at the handrail, to look at the plumbing, the heating, to make sure that the windows. And they're going to look at other things in the house to make sure. It almost, in some ways, is like an additional level of inspection security for yeah. you, right? So you've had an inspection on your property. You you know you're burning and churning on this property. And you want to now make sure that's even kind of up to the city standards. They come out and check. They'll come out, I believe, twice a year. It depends on the city. They'll come out twice a year and check on that property to make sure that it's up to the living standards to place a Section 8 tenant in the property. Right. So there are additional. There's additional paperwork that you have to deal with. Um, the one thing about the Section 8 in the in the city that we invest in, uh, they make direct deposits. They don't send me a check, and they deposit the rent on the last day of every single month without fail um, because they're good for it you know they've, they've committed to it you don't have to like chase the city down for rent that's why i think owners really love it so much because it is guaranteed rent uh, but some people don't love it because the city can come out and sort of you know it's a bureaucracy. Irritate you with like, we would like the latches to be different on this window. The tenant doesn't care about that, but the city inspector has decided to, you know, for whatever reason, use their power and don't go off. No, I'm just going to say, I'm going to say sometimes you have a city inspector who like I've worked with them in the city of East Orange, New Jersey and others who you get, you get John who's just like having a good day, you know, and he's yeah. like, he, the house is great. He certifies that you have Bill who's having a bad day and he feels like you need to change those latches for whatever reason. Right. And then now you're out of pocket to do that in order to certify. So, you know, that can be onerous. We had a property that we purchased with a Section 8 tenant inside of it. And she is elderly and disabled. So her ability to maintain the property is limited. Section 8, after we bought it, the, they came and did an inspection and they said, we want all these things fixed before, or we're not going to pay rent after two or three months if it's not done. And a lot of these things are not a landlord's responsibility. It's like the cabinets she's not able to repair some of them or some of its tenant damage and we don't feel comfortable making her repair it but we shouldn't have to repair so we're in this gridlock because the city's like i don't like the way this is we're giving you they gave us a thirty thousand dollar bill of things to repair hmm. and we're like what you, this wasn't on your previous inspection when the previous owners did this why are you doing this to us so we had to get a lawyer involved saying that these are above and beyond what we should have to do. We also don't think we should make the tenant do that because she's a nice lady. She never misses her rent. She in fact came around and said, I'd like to renew, renew my lease. These are things, of course, I'm going to have to repair when she moves out, but she's happy there. Section eight is just causing me a problem. So then I had to get a lawyer involved. So there are additional headaches, but in the meantime, they do make their payment. There are certain things I'm happy to fix. Like, okay, that's a safety hazard. I do want to put that really not that wasn't there before, you know, but it's just like, okay, something else I have to deal with. You know, if you're not the kind of person who wants to deal with anything of the sort, you need to be prepped for that. You can also charge a little bit more for rent. This has been our experience in a lot of Section 8 properties is that you can charge like a little bit of a premium because you have to go through these hoops and hurdles and in order to qualify. So the tenant is only paying a portion of it anyway, right? So they're not paying the full 100%. They might be paying 28%, 30% of what you have listed for rent and the city's going to pay the rest. So because you have to do these additional hoops and hurdles and other things in order to be city certified under this program, you can maybe charge 
charge $100 more a month per rent, which is certainly the case in some of our properties. So bonus. But here's one other negative. If you don't have the stomach for this, and this is kind of, I think this is the one thing that more than anything else bothers people about Section 8 renting is that you just don't get paid for like the first three months. So a tenant moves in in May. You're Now that tenant moves in May 1st, you know, June, July, you're probably not going to get that rent check from the city. They usually take three months in order to cut you that first check. I don't think that's in every municipality. No, it's not, but it's in a lot of them. In and it's some of them, Detroit, right, but... it's in Chicago, it's in uh, all kind. It's it's in a lot of major metropolitan cities. Because this is a federal government that's run inside of your state, so it really varies state to state. Yeah, I mean, as well. we had an existing tenant in our property on that particular one, yeah. so we were getting rent right away. But in a lot of cases, you're putting their place a new tenant in there. They wait till it builds up a certain amount in the coffers, so to speak, and then they cut you that check. Now, you'll get all three months at once. So you'll get that May, June, July, but you won't get it until probably the end of July or August, and then you'll get August's rent. So if you can stomach that, not having those three months of rent, and then getting them three months later... In that, se in that same neighborhood, we actually have a vacancy and the property manager said we've had two Section 8 applicants. So what I think you should do is certify this property in advance, go to the state and ask them to certify it so that they start to filter more uh, tenants in towards you. And so I know, like I'm just sort of bracing myself that I'm going to go through this, they'll send an inspector and they're going to come back and be like, I don't like the cut of this grass. I don't like this you know, tree in this place or whatever. So there's going to be things that I don't like to hear. And I'm kind of okay with that because I know that once they put a tenant in and section eight tenants do tend to stay longer. All right. That's um, so that's a big, that's a big bonus section right. eight tenants because they don't want to have to move around a lot. And because it's hard for them to find property, they tend to stay a longer time. Right. And again, you're getting the city paying you consistently on time. So there's a huge up, to me, there's a huge benefit to having a Section 8 tenant in the property if you can stomach the bureaucracy on the front end, getting it certified. And we've had this happen in one of our markets as well, where we've gotten it certified or it should have passed. They came out and said, we want these four things fixed. They were all little minor things. This handrail needed to be tightened. This thing needed to be fixed, this light bulb, whatever. Close the vents for the children. Right. That kind of thing, yeah. So we took care of it. And then they sent the inspector out to confirm, but it was a different inspector who found he just, again, decided he wanted this to be this and this door jam needed to be. So all these like little fiddly things, uh, this outlet cover needed to be changed. Or, and then it's like, well, wait a second. These weren't the four things you told us to do initially. We took care of those. Now you're coming back. So again, if you can stomach that process. Right. It's annoying. But the, annoying. honestly, this is why it's great having a great property management team in place, which is what we do, because they will handle a lot of this process for you. They have a relationship with the city. They can call the inspectors and say, look, they've already passed this inspection. That's ridiculous. They can have these, they have these relationships. So that's also a benefit. Right. Exactly right. So I don't mind it. I, I don't know if I would love it if everyone in our portfolio was a Section 8 tenant just because of the extra hurdles that I have to deal with, not with the tenants. I've never had problems with the Section 8 tenants. It's just dealing with the bureaucracy of the city uh, that irritates me. Um, and you got to catch me on the right day for it. You know, I will say I have a friend of ours uh, who has done thousands of properties in the New, New Jersey area years ago, um, our friend Abe. Um, he, interestingly, you know, he told me, he said, we have a girl in our office at our property management office dedicated to our section eight tenants oh. and there's a portal. So when we have a vacancy on any one of our properties, we literally just go right into that portal for section eight and it's listed and we get just a ton of great applicants right through that portal. So they've, you know, a lot of cities and a lot of areas state to state have really ramped up their ability to get properties listed and tenanted. And if you have a vacancy, so yeah. good stuff, there you go. So there's a little walk down section eight lane for you. We hope this was helpful and hope it doesn't scare you off. We hope we also maybe squashed some stereotypes about Section 8 tenants as well. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't already, please download our free Freedom Cheat Sheet. It's right there. You can download it. Just go to uh, morrisinvest.com slash freedom. If you haven't already downloaded, it can help you figure out how to build financial freedom using rental properties. We'll see you next time, everyone. Thanks for subscribing.